Hey guys, so this is going to be a brief tutorial, not on how to solve a Rubik's Cube, but on how you can teach others to solve a Rubik's Cube using a really great beginner's method that I made up. Now, I say it's great for a few reasons. First of all, it only uses two algorithms that you have to actually memorize, and the rest of it is intuitive. You have a fully intuitive F2L with this method, and most of your last layer is also intuitive. Now, this method is slightly more difficult than other beginner's methods, like um, if you want the easiest beginner's method, you might want to go with something like the sexy move method, or even just standard layer by layer. But this is a hexagonal Francisco variant, and I think that if you teach this to a beginner, they can learn it pretty easily, and it sets them up to be much better at cubing in the future if that's something they're interested in. I could probably make a full tutorial for this for beginners, but I think that it's actually a method that's better to teach someone in person because there are some parts that take a little bit of patience to learn at first and they use some fairly advanced techniques, so it's good to have someone you can sit there with and have them show you what to do. Now, sorry if my voice sounds a little bit quiet or muted or something. I'm trying to be quiet because I'm the only person who's awake in the house right now. This is why I shouldn't record videos at 1 a.m. The first step of this method is building what's called a hexagon, and you're going to do that in a few steps. So you start by building a three-quarters cross, and a really easy way to do that is just gather three white edges on the yellow side, line them each up with their respective center, and flip them down to the white side. You just do that for each edge, and then you'll be left with a three-quarters cross. Of course, you could do this with any colors. I just use yellow and white because that's what I'm used to. Next, you orient your three-quarters cross on the bottom right of the cube, and you look for your next corner to solve to expand this into a rectangle. Just find the corner that matches your F and R centers, insert it into the FRD slot, ignoring orientation. If it doesn't work the first time, repeat the process until it's oriented correctly, just replacing it with a random corner, then putting the correct corner in again. If it were an algorithm, it would be R U prime R prime, and that would put it into the slot, but you can really show that to a beginner just as breaking the three quarters cross temporarily, putting a piece into a place, and then fixing the three quarters cross. They don't really need to understand that as an algorithm, and I think if they don't think of it as an algorithm, they'll actually be set up to learn a lot better in the future. Doing this same process for the back right corner should be very simple, and then they'll have their whole rectangle worked out after that. Now this is probably the hardest step for someone to learn, so you might have to work with them for a while on this, but once they understand the concept of breaking and restoring, they'll be able to learn the rest of the method very easily. Next, you complete the hexagon by adding the last corner to it, so just put the rectangle on the bottom left, and then use either R prime or R2 to insert the corner from the top layer to the bottom layer. If neither of those works, just do an R and then try again. Once again, this should not really be taught as an R or an R prime to show them how the pieces are actually moving and then they'll be able to complete their hexagon. So the next step is to use keyhole to fill in the E layer. So you just do that by finding any edge that doesn't have yellow or white in it, positioning it in the UF spot, finding the two centers it goes between, putting them on the right, and then inserting it with an R U prime R prime or an R W U R W prime. And you can show them the difference between those two. So if it's an R W, the center will match up like this. Then you can insert it with the wide turns. So that'll just be R W U. R prime, and if they don't line up, then you can use R U prime R prime to insert the piece. And again, do not teach these as R U a prime R prime and R W U R prime. Instead, just show them how the piece is moving and how they are actually putting the piece into the slot using break and restore. I've already taught a beginner with this method, and the break and restore technique is not difficult for them to understand. The next step is to add the final corner to the first two layers. So you just position it in the FLU spot and use wide turns to move it to the D layer. This does take the edge out of the E layer, but you can just pair it back up with the corner, kick it out of the way, restore your hexagon, and then insert the edge corner pair as if you're just inserting the edge back into the E layer. Now that pair won't always be formed right away, so what you can do is just keep inserting that corner back into the D layer and then keep pairing it up with the edge, and eventually it'll rotate the corner enough times that you create that pair and you can insert it like normal. The next step is to orient corners, and we'll use a soon algorithm for this. So you just check how many already have yellow facing up, in this case we have two. If it's anything but one, you put one in the front left facing you, and perform the soon algorithm. When you only have one, you put that one face up corner in the front left, and perform the soon algorithm again. And then eventually, you know, if you keep repeating this process, you'll get to the point where all the corners are oriented. So the next step is to permute corners, and this is the only other algorithm you're going to have to use, an A-perm. So you just find if there are any headlights or two corners of the same color, you put them in the back and then perform the A-perm. If there aren't any headlights, you just perform it anywhere, and then it'll create some headlights for you. 
So the next step is to orient edges, and we do this just like Roo. So knowing that m prime u m or m prime u prime m, and again, don't learn those as algs, just show what they do, will flip the four edges closest to you, everything but the u b edge, and it'll change their orientation. You can use this to just reduce the cube to a state with four flipped edges. From here, you can either use the same technique to flip the remaining edges, or if they're all in the top layer, use m prime u 2 m to insert one into the bottom layer, and that should be fairly intuitive how that works, and then use the technique to solve them as usual. From here, we'll continue using a beginner's version of Roo LSE, so just take note of your right and left center colors, and then do an M2. Using the M prime U2 M technique that we learned earlier, make it so that your D layer edges correspond to your left and right centers. Then all you have to do is make sure that when you do your M2 to put your white center back on the bottom, you're also putting those edges between the corners of their color. From here you'll have at most four edges left unsolved, and those can be solved very easily just by using that same edge insertion technique into the bottom layer. As we've been using the whole time, it won't mess up anything else. So, from there, you'll be done. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something, and again, this is a method that you should really sit with someone and teach them if you're going to teach them this method. If, if not, if you're just going to send them to a YouTube video, just send them to a layer-by-layer -layer method or something. But this one gives them a really good intuitive understanding of everything that they're doing. Basically every step except for corner orientation and corner permutation, they can actually see exactly what they're doing on the cube and why it works. So I think it's a really good method for beginners to actually understand and be engaged in the learning process, and it sets them up to learn better methods in the future. This method can be very easily used to transition to Roo. But anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Monday.